Welcome everybody to the Hatchet's Wade podcast, the first live in person edition. <laughs> Representing, <laughs> uh, this was a goal, this was a plan. I thought it would happen in Atlanta, but it's happening in, in Dallas with the wonderful, the magnificent Terry. Hello. What up, T? Thank you so much for having me. Terry, you probably know her because she's amazing. Um, and she's and she's loaded, but besides from that, she's a really a really dope person where everyone needs to hear her story and learn from her journey. So Terry, how are you today, man? I am good. Do you know? I still remember. I don't know where we were. I don't know if it was like Atlanta or somewhere. We've been, we've been in a few different we've places a, together. Like yeah, yeah, we were in Austin together. Yeah. at the boat party. Yeah, there was. I just remember there was one room, and you were like. Uh, we were all talking, and I started first, and you were like, yes, we got to start with the person with the most money in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. I did say that. So I have a pretty good sense of humor for people who know me in real life. I don't know if it always comes across on camera, but in real life, I'm a pretty good time, which is actually going to be our first question, Terry. Oh, geez. Who was the most lit person at Erica Williams' uh, boat party? You, of course. Of course it was you. Yeah, it was. I remember afterwards we went and got tacos too. It was totally you. The taco story. So I was on the boat. I don't think I ate because I was too busy dancing and drinking. So Money Madu. Second part. Shout out to Money <laughs> Madu. <laughs> he had to go inside and order me tacos. And that saved my life. So shout out to Money Madu for getting me tacos. Uh, shout out to Erica on the hey, boat Money party. Hey, Money Madu. Hey, Erica Williams. <laughs> so uh, Terry, you are kicking butt. In a major way, tell the people what kind of year you had financially last year. Wow. So 2019, I made my first million dollars, and I thought that that was going to be the the epitome. Yeah. I was, like, actually thinking that, like, it was going to go downhill from there. Mm. Like, is this never going to happen again? <laughs> Let me One save time it. Let me thing. be conservative. Yeah. Yep. I was like, oh, this was a, a, a mistake. It's just a happenstance. <laughs> And then in 2020, I actually had my first eight-figure year. I made Ooh. over $10 million. Um, actually, I made like $14 million. Whoa, fresh. Uh, yeah. Oh, it wow. was a crazy year. Man. Um, congratulations. Thank you. And when I saw you say it on David Shan's podcast, shout out to David Shan's, great guy, by the way, uh, I was like, wow. I wasn't that surprised because you've, I kind of expect that from you. But I couldn't, I, I was like, you know, she deserves it. She deserves these kind of numbers and these kind of wins because of who you are and what you put out there. How did you earn that kind of money? So a big part of it came from courses. So okay. I teach people how to, how to invest in the okay. stock market. And um, I also traded myself. So I had my first six-figure day. Um, $100,000 on one day? Yeah. Uh-huh. And like I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know what? When I first started learning how to trade, my goal was to make three hundred dollars a day. If you would have done that, you would have been cool. I would have been. I, I was cool. That's. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can quit my job. I can travel around the world. I can be free. But now, like recently, I've started making like three hundred thousand dollars in a day on a regular basis. And I'm like, wow, Terry, Pressure you went right from three hundred dollars a day to three hundred thousand dollars a day. In that the is, matter, in the span of how many years? I've been trading eleven years, but my three hundred thousand, three hundred dollars a day was like three years ago. So in about three years' time, I've increased my trading that uh, much. All right, so from three hundred dollars a day to three hundred thousand dollars a day, it's possible. It's mm -hmm. possible with enough work. Yeah. Do you find it hard? So, so you're crushing it in life. You're trading, you're traveling. That's the name of your course. Hit the website link below. Mm -hmm. Do you find it hard to not diversify, to stick to your lane, to not go and flip houses every week because people on Instagram Live are doing it? Or is it easy for you? Well, I like doing what I'm good at. And I'm okay. actually a very focused person. Good. So I think for me, like, I get overwhelmed super easy. So I'm like, let you me just You gotta know who do... you are in life. Yeah. You I'm like, know. I just need to do one thing and do that one thing really well. Okay. And for me, it was even like, I don't know if I even need to like, like, in the beginning, I just wanted to trade. I didn't even want to have the course because wow. I wanted to focus on just trading. Interesting. Yeah. And so now the course lately has been like, oh my God, now I have to like split my attention. <laughs> And so, like, anything else is just a bit much. It's just too much to handle. Yeah. 
But I will say that, like, I love real estate. So mm-hmm. as I've as I have increased my income, I have been diversifying a little bit into like looking into apartment buildings and looking nice. into like purchasing multi units and stuff like that. But that's just a passion. It. And you're looking at real estate now after you've mastered what you're currently doing. And most people, they want to do every the whole seven streams myth or fact, depending on who you ask. It's not seven streams at one time you start. It's kind of space them out and let one thing grow to the other. Yeah, they say riches in the niches. Who Like when you can pressure. really focus on one thing and do that one thing really great, then everything else will come. But yep. when you spread too thin, you're not doing anything well. Mastery leads to multiple. Ooh. That's pressure right there. I need to write that down. <laughs> let, Put let it me on a get shirt. My notebook. Y'all Put know it on I'm a teaching shirt. like mastery. Mastery leads, leads to, to multiple. multiple. It does. <laughs> Andre Hatchet. There we go. Don't forget the C. <laughs> All right. Why do some people not want to pay for intellectual property or somebody's time or experience even when they have the money? Let me guess. You're tired of your job and you want to become your own boss. You need to supplement your income and part-time work. And you're a serial entrepreneur who wants to start another business with low startup costs. Well, you need to come and join the 2 to 12K club today. We will teach you how to start this business for only $500. How to effectively market your services. How to secure long-term high-paying clients. How to make $60 to $250 per appointment. How to create systems and make money without being at an appointment. And you will get the peace of mind that you can leave any job at any time and start this business. For more details, check out the 2 to 12K Club today. The 2 to 12K Club.com. Why do some people not want to pay for intellectual property even when they have the money? Even when they have the money. So that's such a loaded question. It Such is. a loaded question. And I heard you on Clubhouse a couple right. weeks ago. And I got a set for you. I was trying to get up there, but they wouldn't let me up. I was going to let some people have it. Oh, but, like, uh, I know you would. I wasn't oh feeling it. I was not so, feeling that. So many people. Okay, so Wall here, Street held you down very well. Did. Sh- Wall Street Trap, a shout, shout out to you. Out to I, I want to have you on the podcast next, Wall Street. Thank you. You know, like some, so there was, I was on like a live on Instagram and um, someone had brought up Trap's name and they were like, I, I like Trap because he stood up for you, Terry. Very well. I was very proud. <laughs> Did a good job. Very proud of that. So, okay, so I think there's a couple things. Okay. Like, there's like. You can say. You can say. <laughs> so, first of all, there's this idea going out that in order to give something or help the culture, it has to be free. And what I really want to let people know is when you think that for the culture means broke, like, that's Ooh. part of the problem. Uh oh. People in our culture are not broke. And like the mentality that keeps saying that we are broke is what's keeping us from being equal in everybody else's eyes. Mm. Because when they think of Black Lives Matter, they think of Broke Lives Matter. And that's not okay. So we need to stop associating for the culture with the amount of money that's in someone's pocketbook. I'm black and I'm a multimillionaire. Mm-hmm. So you can't tell me that I can't afford something that's $5,000 because to me, like that's, that's nothing, Yeah, which sounds bad, but I'm just saying it is what it is. So like, we've got to stop associating color and culture with bank account and cash. You can still be deep and pro black and or woke and charge for your time and your information. Yeah. Well, and still be wealthy. Mm, I like that. Like, like it's that. it's almost like like when I was growing up, people would say, well, why are you talking white? Because I was talking proper. And it was a thing of, well, if you can't be black and be proper, <laughs> you can. You can be both. Yeah, you can. And be. I, I think that's the same thing with wealth, too. Like there's a both and and we keep trying to like go for this. We, we want to build wealth. We want to get, we want to invest. We want to um, get up to the next level. But then we keep keeping our businesses down and saying, well, we can't charge you or we can't pay for what you do. And like those won't both ex- equally exist. Mm-hmm. And then people want to dictate people's pricing. I think it's a black thing. And I think it's a woman thing as mm. well. I do it's think women, it's, black. it's women's history month. So we can speak on that <laughs> we too. We can speak on that too. Okay. No, wait, wait, you go first. Cause. Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of times women in this regard have it harder as far as uh, charging for your worth. I think especially maybe a, a, a nice woman, a, a woman who, who, 
who's pleasant. You have a very pleasant voice, very pleasant demeanor, good looking woman. They oh, might dear. expect no. you to just <laughs> to just be, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just give you what I have. But no, mm-hmm. you have a standard. Mm-hmm. And you've paid how much money have you paid on every education? single course that I took was twenty to thirty thousand dollars per course. Wow. And I took multiple courses. Yep. And when I looked at paying the those people, the thought was not, oh, like, why are you charging me? It's like, no, I'm thinking about the value that I can get from what you're teaching me. Mm. I know that I will make multiple, multiple off of what you're teaching me. So, yes, what you're giving is worth the twenty to 30000 So I, I can't even imagine why someone would, would look at anybody else's course or any entrepreneur's product and say it's not worth me paying for it because it's for the culture especially when you have uh, we know all the same people right or mm-hmm. just about um i don't know anyone who's ever said anything bad about your product <laughs> ever. i've never heard anybody say anything bad about it ever in my thank life thank you and that's true like we've had like six thousand people take the course growing every day a 6, thousand 000. of them in the thousand dollars in a day club testimony upon testimony of how well they're doing yeah. and and yet you think i should give it away for free yeah that's not gonna work <laughs> <laughs> a cu- wait one other thing yep. i will say there was this thought of if you make more then you should do things for free that was like another thing well you know, if, mm. if you had 500 million, would you, you know, charge people? Mm-hmm. But I think about Elon Musk and all the other billionaires in the world. Elon is a billionaire, but he still charges for Teslas because the Tesla is worth what it's worth. Ooh. But then that's intellectual property to something that people can physically have in their hands. And people have a higher value on physical stuff compared to intellectual stuff. And see, that's such a bad thing. Like, that's mm-hmm. a mindset shift in itself. Mm-hmm. Like, the things that go into your mind are more valuable than just the material things. I agree. And on top I of agree. that, like, I know my thing is a course. It's a package. So it's not just, you know, am I going to stand in front of you and, and preach? But it's like, no, this is a, this is a, a physical thing, too. It's a course. It's an online course mm-hmm. that put took hours and hours of work. And what like you're still putting years into years to formulate, yeah, mm-hmm. and years of time. Grab the course, y'all. Change your life. Link below. <laughs> <laughs> How is your life or your overall life different now than it was when you had a full time job? And how long have you not had a full time job for? So I quit my job in 2017. So four so years, 2021 now. Okay. The four years oh or three my and gosh. change. Yeah. yeah. Wow, time flies. Time flies when you're getting rich. Yeah, it does. Wealthy. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. W- wealthy. Oh, um, my bad. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how long I haven't had a job. I think the difference is now are that I control my time. So, yeah. so it's the thing of if I decide that everything is going to stop today, then everything stops today and I can get in a plane tomorrow. Hmm. I can work from wherever I want to work. Like, I, I choose the rules which I think is very different than when I was crying in the bathroom with a boss. Oh, that bad. So bad. Like every single day they tried. And and I think this is to the point of earlier us talking about people have different expectations for women. I think that when I walked into my school building, there was one principal in particular, no, two bosses in particular, who saw my light and wanted to dim it. That's insulting. Insulting. And I think that they did everything possible to try to make me feel less than because they were intimidated. Mm-mm. And this is like what I've come to think, come to understand after getting out of the situation. Mm. But like it would be little things like I would do a whole project and then they would criticize me for like the one thumbtack that was the wrong color. Or it'd be, OK, you did this great job. Everybody's happy, but you did it different than I said. So so you still did it wrong, you know. So just everything to make me feel like I, I wasn't wanted, like I was um, n- like less than. But then I think that was my Moses moment. Yeah. Like. Showed you what you were made of. <laughs> yeah. And it was like in I'm a big Bible person in the Bible. There's a time where Moses went to Pharaoh to, to get the Egyptians out. But the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And the, the thing is, every time Moses went he would have this like really great petition and then Pharaoh would say no. But the thing is Moses wouldn't have moved if Pharaoh had, had said yes. 
Mm-hmm. And I think God knew that I would get comfortable in that school. I wouldn't have started trade and travel. I wouldn't have started, like, left the job if things were comfortable. You had to get ticked he off. He needed to harden their heart so that I would leave. Like, can you imagine all the people's lives who wouldn't be in? Like, y'all wouldn't be sitting here doing this podcast had totally I not agree. left. I remember um, I used to work with special needs children. I was a teacher's aide and assistant youth basketball coach. Very honorable work, but the pay is the pay. People told me to work the job for 20 years, then get a pension and retire. So I would have still been there. I would have been 42, 41 or so. And the max of what I would have been able to make would have been uh, with overtime, 70, 60. If I would have become a teacher, 120. 130 on the high end. That's on the high end. That's on the high end. And I've had months where I made 40, 40 and change, 30 and change. So my whole year salary in a a month. month. People will put the limitations on you. You got to brush them shits off and and, and kick them and step on them too. I'm I'm not even going to go there. I'm going to get pissed off. (laughs) I I am going to go there. People try to limit you in life, right? Especially when you're black. People try to limit Mm -hmm. you. And 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 they have this notion that they're doing you a favor, trying to save you. Save me for what? Right. I don't want to do that for 20 or 30 years. Nothing wrong t- for anybody who does, but I got something different to go figure out. I'm going to figure this shit out. I'll see you later. That's the same thing we just talked about with mindsets too. Like people putting more more value on a material thing yeah. than actual the mental and the education part of things. Mm-hmm. But it's like that the education is what's going to take you to do something else. That skill set is going to like be able to allow you to break those molds and those minds, like those limitations. Yep. But unless people actually go for that part, they'll never know. Well, there we go. And along the journey with me having these kind of months, uh, I get a, a, a DM, a text message, an email from somebody who I've helped with my mobile notary academy earn uh, between two and $12,000 a month consistently. So I, I'm actually still teaching. It's just I'm teaching on my own terms now. Exactly. Life works itself out. That, like, so crazy. How, okay, okay, you're supposed to be asking me questions, but can I no, ask no, you no, a question? You, shoot, spit it out. So, like, how does it feel now taking that skill set kind of on the road? Because I feel like some people get so stuck yeah. and, like, limited by, well, I'm a teacher, so I have to be in a building. We identify with who we were so much. Um, I feel every day I wake up and I realize I don't have to be where I am physically to earn a dollar. I don't have to be in one specific location to earn a dollar every day. I can earn it from my mind now. It feels rewarding. It feels purposeful. And it feels very fucking good. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> that's how i feel when i trade because i trade for my cell phone yep. so i'm like i could be anywhere literally literally and, and i feel like I, I also feel like i deserved it i put in the work i grinded it out i've mastered my craft and now i'm able to reap the rewards from it, it feels wonderful i have a great life my life is a shit it really is. Like, you're here in my house, and I, I like, you're, you're, yeah, okay, this house. Your life is shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> this house. <laughs> Yo. Pressure indeed. Are you a spender or are you frugal? I'm super frugal. Why? Except on things that I love. Ooh, okay. So, like, I mean, I'm a Nigerian woman. Like, a motherland. Like Logo, we, stand up, money, madu, whatever. We don't pay full price for anything. <laughs> <laughs> like and if you ask us to pay full price like it's an insult it's insulting. like you, yeah you insulted me that Whoa. you thought i was gonna pay full price okay. and you didn't offer like <laughs> there's this there's this one time i was in thailand mm. and i was with another girl she's um she's greek background okay. but we were like about to get in this boat and like it was literally the only boat that was left wow. and the guy she's negotiating with the guy and he will not budge on his price she feels so insulted. She decides I will walk through the woods at night in Whoa. Thailand instead of ride in your Thailand. boat because <laughs> you Yo. did not offer me a lower price, which we like it's a little backwards because we just talked about your price is your price. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually very proud of him for sticking to his guns. Okay. But there is a part of like my culture that I, I identified with her, even though I thought it was like crazy because I'm pretty sure like. She she lived, but she could have like 
fell in a sinkhole late yeah, at night. Yeah, like they were with their real. cell phone trying to figure out. That was stupid. I got in the boat. <laughs> I paid him. You, you, you paid full front. <laughs> I paid him what he was worth, but just mm. the fact that he did not want to negotiate. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm frugal. You're on the frugal side of things. Yeah. Where did you, you so so you, you got it from your upbringing, your parents? Yeah, uh, I I grew up with a single mom and a okay. single grandmother, and my grandmother like. She had six kids and didn't have, like, my stepdad, I mean, my stepdad, my grandfather had a different household. Okay. So she had to, like, take care of all six kids by herself. So they, like, shared clothes. Everything was hand-me-down. And then with my mom, it was just my mom and me. And she had mm. me really young. So, like, everything we did was, like... We had a happy meal. We split the happy meal. Um, like every, like I didn't know because I thought that like that was life. Yeah, like I had a great upbringing. But listening to her now, like everything, like we never got anything that wasn't on clearance. Um, like my mom right now, like she loves the fact that she can go to the grocery store and actually get what she wants. Because wow. for a long time, she could only get what was on the coupon page. Deep. So that's just how I grew up. You, you. You save, you go for what's cheap, you look for the cheapest option. And so it's been really cool now not having to do that. Do you think people should be more frugal? I think people should have goals and then figure out how to best get to their goals. So, for example, I like to travel. I'll spend $20,000 on a house like when I'm traveling because I really like the space that I'm in. But I have like a beat up car that... It's paid off, and I'm not going to get another car until it falls apart. You have a beat-up car, and you made 14, ba- 14 million bands last year. Yeah, like, what's the point of getting a new car? It works. Like. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep on doing it. <laughs> That's real. That's real, because not that everyone has to do that. I do think people... I think a lot of people would be further ahead if they gave up a certain time period of their life. When I bought my first property, I was 22. I I gave up two years and change of my life. I had 7,000, 10,000 bands in the bank, 720 credit score. My car died. Mm. So I car died. 20, 21, young. I had a decision to make. I can go finance the car, but then I couldn't buy a property because my debt to income ratio would have been all jacked up. I took the bus. But I you had goals. Bus. I, that goal will keep you on track. Yes. It I will keep you there. Do you know, okay, there was a guy, I think he was on um, Sleep is for Suckers, and he talked about how he slept in the garage. Did you see that one? Y'all know, he's from Philly. Um, Doug, yeah, yes. yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Him, his girl, goals. too. In the, in, the, in the sleeping bag. Yeah. In Philly. Philly's cold. Philly gets cold in the winter. Yeah. See, I heard that. like that's that's gold. That's gold. <laughs> when you give up everything to rent out your house so that you can save up so that you can be like wealthy when, you know, in a couple years, like it pays off. It does. It pays off. But it does have sacrifice. And I think sometimes lately people don't want to sacrifice. They mm-hmm. just see the folks that are doing well and they just think, well, I'm going to step straight into that without having to give up anything. So let's just get really. It sucks. It sucks. In the interim, sacrificing because you're watching everyone else do all these cool things, and you have the money there, yeah. or so on your credit card, like it's right there in your pocket or in the bank, and you and you're looking at it and you're saying, "I gotta wait." Yes, and that- your friends are going away. <laughs> oh damn! That yeah, I had a few years of that. That like the hardest feeling is when you know that you, excuse me, you can do something, mm-hmm. but you feel like you can't do it yet. And you're like, I have the money to do this, but I can't do it yet. That is like the most excruciating feeling, but you have to work through it yeah. because eventually you'll get to the point where you can have it and you can enjoy it fully. If you could stay home and be bored one to three, two to five years, something along those lines, that's not every night. But if you can give a, if you can give up a certain part of your adulthood, I think you can live a much better life for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I do think that like, like people, when they look at my journey, they don't, they don't know the sacrifices that I made. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, I know we keep coming back to this like worth and value question, but it's important and and it's annoying too. Let's Mm -hmm. talk about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's annoying. But like, I think on the years where I was literally 
couldn't go anywhere, staring at a computer, working on slides, recording video, trying to get it all into, yes, trading, doing 16 hour days, like wake up, trade, then I got to work with my staff, then got to coach and I'm to coach students. So these are 16 hour days, can't sleep, can't go anywhere, like doing all these things. Like that's the sacrifice that happens behind the scenes. That people don't talk about. That's why I'm worth what I'm worth. Because of those sacrifices in the years behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Like um, another one of my friends, um, Abu, he always talks about what you're paying for right now is not this moment. You're paying for the years the that years it took to, to get, get to this there. moment. And the shortcut in which it, it, it has a high likelihood to uh, the time frame in which you'll be saving, most likely be saving if you pay us for the information. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll pay you two or, or five thousand dollars to save me three to five years. Eleven. I've been training eleven years. <laughs> I'll I pay had, the two to five bands. Man, I had six so it took me six years of losing money before I first started getting six consistent. Six. Holy crap. In I didn't my know seventh that. year is when I first when I finally started wow. getting it all to click. And now I have a student who in four months he's already made Five thousand percent return. He went from a five hundred dollar account to thirty five thousand dollar account in four yeah. months. Like that's what he paid for. That's real. The seven years versus the four months. When you have a teacher. There we go. Is four X cap. <laughs> so okay, the actual the actual idea of trading forex is not. Okay. And I know that because I'm a traveler. So, like, I know mm. that when I go to Mexico, I have to exchange dollars for pesos. Okay. I know that when I go to China, I have to exchange dollars for, well, J- Japan. That's a common one. The Japanese yen. Like, I know that, like, the differences between currency is a legit way to make money. Like, okay. there's times where I may have my U.S. dollar get pesos, but then when I come back, I can't change them out. I don't exchange them right away because the exchange change yeah. rate might be different in a couple days mm. like that's what's happening in forex like that's what they're trading the currency so it's a legit thing but w- the way that people are doing it right now with like multi-level marketing and the way you yeah. make money uh, by recruiting people that's that's cap that's cap okay yeah. i'll take that mm-hmm. i'll take that do people have to love what they do in order to make a million dollars plus a year do they have to love what they do no i agree um, with that I think that some things, some things are a calling and you Mm. do it because you're called to it, but that doesn't mean that every moment you're going to love it. Mm. Um, And I also think that you don't have to always be happy doing what you do. Um, But I do think that you should find ways to become happy or find joy for it to be sustainable. That's good. Because if it doesn't at some point become like a, a thing that in, brings you some type of joy or you can find some joy, it's going to be really hard to keep going. Gotcha. I, I think about that a lot with any type of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is hard. Oh, yes. Ridiculously hard. So hard. Ridiculously. And if people think that, oh, I'm going to leave my job to become an entrepreneur and they think that that journey is going to be super mm-hmm. exciting, like it's hard. <laughs> and you're not always going to like it, but it might bring you more money than if you would have stayed at your job. I look at this thing called what I call back end passion, right? Where you don't like what you're currently doing. You don't hate it, but it's kind of like, cool. It's cool. It works. It's a gift. It comes easy to you and you have the profit from it. But the back end passion is you're able to go away for however long you want to go away for. So front end passion, that's not always there, but do you enjoy the lifestyle that it gives you? Mm-hmm. Do you enjoy the lifestyle that the work that you're not in love with or pa- overly passionate about it gives you? But I think more adults need to look at back end passion because some people won't overly love what they do to earn money. Some people just aren't those people. So you're not the kind that says like when you're working, it won't feel like it's work. Stupid because and it's a lie. Be- <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie, and it's misleading because. When you get bored, you're going to stop and say, oh, man, that's not what I read in the blog. Mm-hmm. It's hard now. Now I'm going to quit and I'm going to start all over and start up a new business and I'm going to quit. I call them um, business hoppers. Mm. They start a new business or idea every three to six months because they get bored. But every business or every venture has this boring, dull moments. And you're looking for that new dating high, that new car smell. 
Well, you should be looking for personal fulfillment. Yeah. That's my thing. Um, you know a lot of millionaires. You know a lot of millionaires under 40. What do they have in common? Grit. Ooh. They know how to stick it out. Mm-hmm. Even, well, that would be grit and persistence. Okay. Um, they have, they have, there's like this like figure it outness. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how to do it, but I can go figure it out. I'm going to figure that thing out. Let me go Google. Let me go talk to somebody else. Like, I can figure it out. Mm. Like, there's that. Um, they also have, like, I do think you have to have some kind of charm or some kind of, charisma. Not a, yeah, charisma. It's not that, that you, like, every person is going to need that, but it's just that, like, I think that's good. One thing I've, one thing I've realized is every business you have to have marketing behind it or it mm-hmm. will not go. Yeah. Um, and I think that there has to be some kind of like way that that person is able to get their product in front of more people. Mm, that's good. So for all the ones that I'm thinking about in my head, there's been something that they've done to be able to get whatever they're doing in A front of pizzazz, more people. Um, you know, Kiara from Charm City Buyers, mm-hmm. Danielle Leslie, yeah. you, Neo, Neo like Maya thinking, Davis, did, yeah. Maddie J. Mm-hmm. David Shams. Maya Eloise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Erica Williams. Shout out yeah. to Erica. We love you, Erica. Yeah. We met through Erica. We met through Erica. So <laughs> so Erica is 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 the glue. Our for a lot of people. <laughs> for a lot of people. Oh, Erica is yes. just that lady. Yes, she is. <laughs> What's the difference between trading and investing? Okay. So trading is a way of investing, but okay. it's just the difference between active investing and and long-term investing. Cool. Active investors, they're trying to make income from their trading. So we're usually still trading really good stocks, still trading what a longer-term investor would trade, but we're just trading in and out of that in order to make income to pay for bills, pay off our debt, pay for a student loan. Like we're using it like a side hustle or an actual job. So that's what an actual trader is doing. Okay. And an investor is someone who who buys 100 shares of Apple uh, and just waits five or 10 years. Yeah, the long term buy and hold investor is their goal is usually more around retirement and keeping the stock over a year. Mm, That's good. You know what what gets me, though? A lot of people lately have been trading options and they've been saying, well, I'm an investor, but they're still trading the option within a year. If you're trading within a year, that's still an active investor. So you're actually a trader. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yep. So even if you're buying like leaps, but you're deciding that you're only going to hold it for six months or nine months, Mm -hmm. you traded it within a year. So you're a trader. So that's something people don't often notice. You said Mm -hmm. something earlier that that I want to go back to. You said that you uh, can't handle a lot of things at one time, a lot of ventures at one time. (laughs) Now, I respect you saying that. A lot of people don't ha- are, are too prideful to say that, and they think they have to overcome that. Mm. Um, I, I want them to study you and say, know who you are in life. Like, know who you are. Some people can handle multiple things. They have a 20-member staff, and then they have outsourcing a bunch of things. But some people need to just do one to two or three things, and that's it. Because if they do that fourth thing, they'll mess up the three, two, one things. Ooh, that's cold right there. Don't have the fourth thing mess up the three, two, one things. Yes. Know who you are and be okay with it. Maximize what you got. I invest in vending machines, right? Um, 20 of them with Charles Oglesby and the guy. Shout out to Charles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't upload any candy to that machine. I don't take out the, the, the change or the dollars. I'm a silent minority partner in those 20 vending machines. I am fine with owning five or 10 or whatever percent of that. Totally fine. Please keep that in mind on your journey. You do not have to do everything yourself. You could probably, you, you know, you have to do everything at one time and or overload yourself to make money. 14 mil, one to three things. Just yeah. keep, keep that in mind. And I will say like, I have about seven income streams, but you also don't have to do all all of them at once. You don't. Like you can have like, okay, this year I'm focusing on these two and I'm yeah. going to master them. Once those are solid, then I go to the next Patience. two. Patience. Yeah. Patience. It's great. Yeah. Uh, how do you hire your staff? I suck at it, honestly. <laughs> like, there's also things I suck at. Hiring is one of them. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, so right now, most of my staff are my family. Okay. I hope so, they don't suck. No, they actually are pretty good. Okay. They haven't got fired yet. <laughs> so, Will you fire them if they start to fall off? Yeah. Oh, okay. And they know that. That's why they haven't like messed up yet. <laughs> Because they're like, we know Terry's crazy. So, <laughs> and I, I'm so thankful for them. Like, they mm. know me so well. Like That helps. I know can, your personality? Yes. Like, I can say some things and any other person would quit. Okay. And I know they would. But my, my family's like, she crazy. We Shout just gonna, out to We going to give her about two, three minutes, come back. And then they go talk to my mom, who talks to my aunt, who talks to my other aunt. And then our whole family knows. And then there's like a reckoning. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jalen's <laughs> laughing because he knows it's going to be true. Staff. He knows my mom. So, yeah. so Jalen's in the corner dying. He's been laughing and doing his faces <laughs> the whole time. Shout out to Jalen. Shout out to the BWR Network. Shout out for setting yes. up uh, the Hatches Way first in-person podcast. Shout out to Jalen and David on this one. Somebody wants to be a millionaire. They don't know what they want to do exactly, but they know they want to be a millionaire. Where do they start? I think first you got to find your, your, and this is going to sound cliche, but you got to find your passion. Okay. It can't be, millionaire can't be the goal. The mm. goal has to be who am I going to serve and how am I actually going to generate income? That's good. And it actually doesn't even have to be who I'm serving because if you're a trader, then it's just you yourself and you're generating income from this one thing. But you got a goal that says like, I'm going to show up for this every day. Yeah. So like, yeah. I think that's where you start. How do I generate income and then how do I make that scale up? Mm. And then as you're scaling, that's when you can start thinking about, well, how much can I make to get to that goal? Because it can't that's be good. just, okay, I'm going to be a millionaire tomorrow and then the Lord will just provide <laughs> a way. No, like these are baby steps that lead up to bigger things. Like I didn't, I didn't become a millionaire this year because I just thought about it. Like, no, I've been trading and my goal originally it. was $300 a day. And I was okay with that. Okay with I think that too is another thing. Learn to be content in whatever season you're in. Like Shout if, if your Moses. season right now is $50,000, learn how to use that $50,000 really well and be okay. Be okay with it. Then when you get to 100000 then you'll, you'll know how, I already know how to work with 50, so I can just save this other I, 50. I can rock out. I can invest it. Excuse me, I could do whatever it is I need to do. That's deep. So that's how I would say, like, first start where you are and learn how to monetize that. Mm -hmm. And then you can make it bigger. 10 million in course sales. Do you have 10 courses or nope. 20 One. courses? One course. One course. It's eight weeks long. You can that start focus, with the first boy. half. That focus will do it for you, boy. <laughs> keep, keep going. Oh, I was just going to say it's eight weeks long. A lot of people start with the first half of it, which we call trade and travel. We call the whole thing VIP. But you can start with the first four weeks at 2500 or the whole thing at 5000 It's one course. And mm. people say, oh, you should, di you should diversify and Absolutely do all these not. other things. So, like, I have a conference <laughs> that we did, mm. and that was cool. Okay. Um, but, no, like, I really, like, this is the course. It's working. And I love my life. Ooh. Once you start, like, doing all these other courses and all these other things. It takes away from, you from your, your lifestyle life. freedom. Yeah. Lifestyle freedom is big. It's addictive, actually. This is why I say, like, I'm I'm happy that I didn't start by just wanting to be a millionaire. Because if that was the case, then I would still be would grinding right now. But the thought is, I wanted to have freedom and I wanted to have a life that I love. Mm. So that's why I do the things that I do. And I... I you balance it all out. Yeah. Damn, man. Knowing when to stop. That's a whole little episode right there. Knowing when to stop. Mm-hmm. Ooh. No, I want to stop. Terry, thank you for your time. Thank you for the hospitality. Thank you to Jalen and David BWR for holding down the set. Yes. Um, follow Terry by her course. She's on YouTube as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Link below. The Hatchers Way Podcast, our first live in person episode. Terry. <laughs>